Make a snack. Headless Pi install. That means setting up a Raspberry Pi without connecting it to a keyboard or mouse. Hello Makers! I've created this video to help those new to the Raspberry Pi to get their board set up so that they can begin working on Maker projects like the ones you'll find on my YouTube channel. Seeking Professor G, you are... Come to the right place you have. Now, if you bought a Raspberry Pi like any of these, you don't have enough to start. There's no power supply, no keyboard, no monitor, no mouse. And while there's no hard drive on the Pi, it does use an SD card for storage, but none of the base Pis even come with an SD card, let alone the operating system needed to run it. But fear not, we'll take you through the setup process step by step, so you're ready to start making. Now I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 0WH. Now the 0WH is a really nice, very inexpensive board to get started making. The W stands for wireless. It supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The H means that the header pins are pre-soldered, which saves the beginner from firing up the soldering iron. But the steps I'm about to show you should work on any of the other Wi-Fi capable Pi boards as well. Now before a Raspberry Pi can do anything, we've got to give it some software. And while on a typical computer your software is installed on a hard drive, on a Pi, we're actually going to install the software on a micro SD card. Now it is possible to buy an SD card that has the Raspberry Pi operating system already on it. This version here is called Noobs, which stands for new out of box software, but you might have an SD card lying around that you can use. And if you do, we're gonna show you how you can install the Raspberry Pi operating system over the internet. Now the technique we're gonna demonstrate is known as the headless Raspberry Pi setup. And that's because we perform the setup without connecting the Pi to a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. Now if you've got a Mac, this is definitely the technique that you wanna use because you don't have a wired keyboard or mouse that you can easily connect to the Raspberry Pi. Now you're also gonna need a micro SD card. Eight gigs or more in size is what you'll want. Anything more than 32 gigs is overkill. If you don't have one of these, you can buy it online for less than 10 bucks. Now if you've got a Mac, you're probably going to need an SD card reader too, because modern Macs don't have a card reader slot. Card readers are pretty cheap, you can also get those online for less than 10 bucks. And also, if you don't have one, you're going to need a power supply that works with the Pi. Now Raspberry Pis before the Pi 4 could use a 2.5 amp 5 volt power supply, but if you need to buy one, you can just search for a power supply for your Pi type. You'll also want a good high quality cable with a micro USB plug on one end that plugs into the Pi. Now Apple users, beware, you might not have a cable that has a micro USB connector on one end, because that's a connector that's not used in any Apple products like iPhones or AirPods. Now the other end of the cable has to plug into your power supply and a standard USB is probably what you'll need. And if you don't have a power supply or cable, you can buy one online for less than 10 bucks. I recommend one with an on off switch. That's a nice feature because you can power down your Pi without having to unplug it. And if you're curious, I've linked to examples of all of these products in a follow along document that you can find at bit.ly slash headless dash Pi. That's all one word, all lowercase. And this document also has step-by-step -step instructions where you can copy and paste any of the commands that we're going to be typing in and avoid any risk of typos. Now I'm going to plug my new SD card into my SD card reader. I've got a fancy reader that also has a bunch of other USB ports and an HDMI port. Now the metal pins on the card go into the slot and the card will only fit in one way. So if it's not going in, don't force it, just flip it over and give that a try. So this is the right way to fit it in. It's nice and snug, but if I flip the card over, it won't even go in this way. Then when I plug the reader into my laptop, I can see the volume for my SD card mounted on the desktop and it's named No Name. So now let's install the Raspberry Pi OS on this card. And to do that, we need to get the Raspberry Pi Imager program from the Raspberry Pi website. So open up a browser, head to raspberrypi.org, then click on software at the top of the homepage, scroll down to the section that says install Raspberry Pi OS using the Raspberry Pi Imager, click the download option appropriate for your computer. Since I'm using a Mac, I'm gonna click on the one that says download for Mac OS. And and I'm going to save this file right to my desktop. Then when it's downloaded, I can minimize the browser, double click on the DMG file. Then to install the Raspberry Pi imager, just drag the big Raspberry Pi icon into the application folder, let go, and that's it. Software installed. So I can close this window, throw the DMG file into the trash. I can also drag the Raspberry Pi imager volume into the trash too. That's just the install program volume. And now to find the Raspberry Pi Imager software you just installed, you can open a Finder window, head to the Application folder, and you should see Raspberry Pi Imager in there. Then launch the program. If you get a warning that says that this file was downloaded from the internet, that's okay. We know this, so just click on Open, and the Raspberry Pi Imager will start up. And now we can click the button that says Choose OS. Now, if you're following along the tutorials on my YouTube channel, unless I've indicated otherwise, you can always install the light option of the Raspberry Pi OS. We won't be needing the desktop files, and you can install any additional files later if you'd like. Now, I use the light option because it takes up less space in the SD card, and it'll install faster. But if you'd prefer to install the full desktop version of the Raspberry Pi OS, because you might be doing additional work on this Raspberry Pi beyond the tutorials on my YouTube channel, or if you just want to mess around with the desktop user interface, then feel free to select Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. But to save time, right here I'm going to select Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then I'm going to select Raspberry Pi OS Lite. 
That'll return you to the previous screen where you should select the Choose SD Card button. Now you'll probably only have one option showing up here, the option for your SD card. Now my card is a 32 gigabyte card, so my SD volume is this one here that's nearly 32 gig. I do not want to click on this one that says 2000 gigabyte. That's actually my external hard drive and I don't want to reformat that drive, that would be a bad thing. So if you have more than one volume showing up here, make sure that you're selecting the generic storage device that is your SD card. Click the appropriate volume for your SD card and that'll return you to the initial screen where you can select the right button. Now you'll get one last warning that this will erase all of the data on the selected volume. Generic storage device media is my SD card, so I'm just gonna click yes. You may be asked for your Mac system password to verify that you wanna erase a volume. If so, enter your password and press okay. And I'm gonna speed up the video here. You'll see a progress bar that indicates that the Raspberry Pi OS is being written to your SD card. Then you'll see another progress bar that indicates the data is being verified. On my MacBook, this took about three minutes. Your mileage may vary. And when done, you'll see a note that says you can remove the SD card from the reader. The SD volume should actually automatically be unmounted from your Mac. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the continue button and I can quit out of the Raspberry Pi imager program since I won't need that anymore. Now at this point, you need to remount your SD card. So to do this, you could just remove the SD card from the reader, then plug it back in. Or you could just unplug the reader and plug it back in. Then you should see a new volume appear on your desktop. It's probably named boot. Now for these next steps, we're going to be entering commands into the Max Terminal program. And if you're using Windows, you're probably using a program like Putty. And instead of typing the commands into the terminal, I'm going to copy the commands directly from the follow along web page that I created at bit.ly slash headless dash pi. That's all lowercase. And then I'll be able to paste these commands into the terminal one by one. This way I don't have to worry about typos. So I'm going to pull up that web page. I'm going to scroll down to step three. And in this step, we need to create a blank file named SSH and add that to our Raspberry Pi's boot directory. Now this is going to allow us to have a communication session between our Mac and the Pi, even though the Pi and the Mac aren't directly connected. So it's sort of like having a wireless call between the Mac and the Pi. Now the touch command says, create the file. The file is going to be named SSH. And this slash volume slash boot bit is just the path name to make sure that our SSH file is going to be saved on our SD card. Now, since I want to enter this command into the terminal, I'm going to highlight this command. I'm going to copy it with a command C. Then I'm going to launch the terminal program in Spotlight. The way that I do that is I hold down command key and press the space bar. Spotlight pops up. I'm going to type in the word terminal, then press return. The terminal launches. And I'll increase the font size in the terminal in the Mac so you can see it a little better by pressing shift command plus a few times. And then at the prompt that shows up here, I'm going to type in command plus V to paste in the line that I just copied. The touch command pastes in, then I can press return, and I've just finished step three. Now on to step four. In this step, we're going to create another file on our Pi's SD card, and this one is going to be named WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. Not a very friendly name. And unlike the SSH file, which was a blank file, this file needs to be edited to contain information about the Wi-Fi network that your Pi is gonna be connected to. So to create and edit this file on our Pi, we're gonna use the Nano program. Now Nano is a simple text-based word processor that we access using the terminal. You move the cursor around the screen in Nano by using the arrow keys instead of the mouse. It's basic, but it gets the job done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this command here that begins with nano. This will open the nano program and create a blank file named wpa underscore supplicant dot conf. And this file is gonna be located on our SD card, which is in the volume named boot. So copy this with command C. I use the shortcut command tab to switch between open programs. And I'll paste the nano command into the terminal prompt using command V. Then press return and nano is ready for me to fill in the wpa underscore supplicant dot conf file. Now the text I want to put inside of this file is back on my web page. So let's head back over there with the command tab. It's this block of text here. So I'm going to highlight all of this text, starting with the word country all the way through the last curly brace. I'm going to copy that with a command C, then I'll command tab to head back over to the terminal program. And then I'll use command V to paste all that text into nano. Now, if you're on a standard Wi-Fi network, you want to change two things, the network name and the password. And remember to move around nano, you want to use the arrow keys, not the mouse. So I'm first gonna backspace to delete both the password and the network name, and I'll enter the proper network name in between the double quotes after SSID. Now this name should be exactly as it appears in Wi-Fi settings, the same upper and lower case, the same punctuation if any, spaces if any, 
and then this network's Wi-Fi password should be in between the double quotes following PSK. Now, if you're in the United States, you don't need to update the country code that you see up here, but if you are from outside the United States, you want to check the Wikipedia page that shows ISO 3166 country codes. Now, if you scroll down this page, you'll see two character codes for each country. So if you're from outside the US, just find your two character country code, return to the terminal, and use that to update your country code as well. Now, once you've updated the file with the network information and password information, you can type in Control X to exit Nano. You'll be asked if you want to save, type Y. The path and file name will then show up. This should be correct if you copied and pasted the Nano command from our web page. So just press return here, and you have configured your Pi so that it knows about your network. So now we can quit out of the terminal, we can minimize our browser, and since we're done configuring the SD card on our computer, if you're on a Mac, you can drag the boot volume into the trash to unmount it. Now you want to take your SD card that you just configured and insert it into the Pi. And remember, the metal pins go in, there's only one way the card fits, so don't force it if it's not going in, just flip it over. Then with your power supply plugged into your micro USB cable, plug the cable into your Pi. Now on the Pi Zero, which I'm using here, either micro USB connector will provide power, but the second one here is the one that you should use if you're going to use any USB data transfer. Now we're going to do all of our data transfer wirelessly, so we don't need this one, so I'm just going to plug into the power only port here. Now micro USB plugs also only plug in one way, so don't force it either. If it's not going in, just flip it over. And my cable has an on switch, so I'll turn that on. The little red light goes on, so I know I'm getting power. And you should see the green LED flash on your Pi. That will flash intermittently until the Pi fully boots. On a Raspberry Pi 0W, which I'm using here, it takes about 30 seconds to boot up. Now I'm going to return to our web instruction page since there are more commands to copy and paste. And we're going to enter these commands using the terminal program. So I'm going to pull my terminal program back up using spotlight with command space, type in the word terminal, press return. Then I'll increase the font size by pressing shift command plus a few times. And now the next thing that we need to do is to generate a key so that our computer can communicate with our Pi. The command we want is highlighted right here in step eight. That's this command that says ssh-keygen. So I'm going to highlight this whole command and copy it with a command C, then return to terminal paste it in at the prompt and press return. Now, if you've previously worked with a Raspberry Pi on this computer, then you might get a message that says something like the known host file is being copied and an old version of the file is being saved. Either way, if you return to the prompt, you're fine and we're ready to finally log into our Pi over Wi-Fi. Now, if we return to our instructions, the command that we're gonna use to log into the Pi is SSH. This is gonna create what's called a secure shell login session. And every time we create a new version of the Raspberry Pi operating system on an SD card, if we plug that card into a device, that device is first known as Raspberry Pi. Now we'll learn how we can change that name in just a bit. And we also log in as a user named Pi. So by saying SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi dot local, we're saying open an SSH connection for the user Pi to the device named Raspberry Pi. So let's copy this whole statement here. We'll return to the terminal. We'll paste it in and we'll press return. Now you'll likely get a series of messages which essentially say that you've never connected to a device named Raspberry Pi before using this Mac. If asked, you could just respond yes to any of these prompts, and you'll also be asked for a password. Now the default password for new copies of the Raspberry Pi OS is Raspberry, that's all lowercase, and we can just copy and paste that from the instruction page and then press return. And congratulations, you've just logged into your Raspberry Pi wirelessly, and notice that just to the left of the command prompt, we see Pi at Raspberry Pi. That indicates that from this point forward, you've logged into the Raspberry Pi device as the user Pi. And we see the terminal also warns us that the default password hasn't been changed, and this is a security risk. So we're going to go ahead and change this. And the way that we do that is we use the Raspberry Pi configuration tool. And we can start that up by typing in sudo raspy-config. If you're curious, when we preface commands with sudo for super user do, we usually do this when we need to run programs or commands that involve some level of security privileges, like changing the password. So with this command highlighted, I'm going to copy that, return to the terminal, paste it into the prompt, press return, and this runs the Raspberry Pi configuration tool. Now we can change our password under system options that's highlighted by default, so just press return, and then we see a list of other options. Now press the down arrow key to move the red highlighting until we've highlighted password. With that selected, press return. You'll get a message prompt saying that you're gonna be asked to enter a new password, press return here as well. Now be aware the characters that you type in for your password don't show up, but type in your new password now and press return. Type it in a second time, press return again. You return to the Raspi configuration tool, but also remember, do not forget your new password.
Now press return at the OK prompt. That brings us back to the start screen for the Raspi config tool. And we're going to rename our Raspberry Pi. Now the name of the Raspberry Pi is referred to as the host name, and we change this under the systems option. So with that selected, press return. And then the next menu, use the down arrow to highlight host name and press return again. And then you're given some guidance on this page as to acceptable host names. So you can read this, then press return. And you can backspace over the name Raspberry Pi and put in your new host name. Now we usually pick a host name that's appropriate for the project that we're working on, say PyBot if you're working on a Raspberry Pi robot, or TalkPi if you're doing the TalkPi project. I'm about to use this Pi in the Smart Medicine Cabinet project, so I'm just going to call mine Pi Cabinet. Once you've entered your new host name, use the right arrow key to highlight OK, then press Return. That brings us back to the main screen, and if you press the right arrow key twice, you'll highlight Finish, so press Return again. And when you're asked to reboot, just select Yes and press Return. Quick pro tip, if you don't have one, I strongly recommend using a password management tool like 1Password to save both your new host name and your new password. Now a good password manager should securely store your passwords but give you access to them via desktop or mobile, and a tool like this has saved my bacon on many occasions. Now you can tell we've been logged out of the Pi because to the left of the prompt it no longer says Pi at Raspberry Pi. Now once the Pi reboots, and this will take about 30 seconds, we're going to log into the Pi once again, but we're going to use our new host name and our new password. Now also know that if you ever want to change your Pi's host name or password, you just sudo raspy config after logging into your Pi, and you can repeat the steps that we just performed. Now up next is step 12, and in the instruction page, this is what we want to enter. SSH, Pi, at, and then you want to make sure that you enter your new host name that you just entered, dot local. Now we could copy and paste this and change the host name or type it in right at the prompt, but I'm going to show you a shortcut. Now if we return to the terminal, if you press the up arrow key on your keyboard, what you do each time you press the up arrow is you cycle through the previous commands that you typed in when you were using that host. So just before we logged into the Raspberry Pi, you were logged into your local computer, mine is called Galaf at this long name, and the last command I typed in at this prompt was this SSH command. Now I don't want to log into Raspberry Pi, but I can use my arrow keys to position the cursor right after after Raspberry Pi, then backspace over the Raspberry Pi name and enter the name of my new host, which is Pi Cabinet, then press return. Now this warning just says, hey, you've never logged into anything called Pi Cabinet before. Are you sure you want to do that? Type yes and press return. I need to make sure that I enter my new password, but there I am, logged into Pi Cabinet as the Pi user. Excellent. Now before we're done setting things up, let's make sure that we've updated our Pi so that it's running the latest versions of its software. Now we do this by using two commands that we see in step 13. Both of these commands use the apt-get tool. Now the first one I want you to copy is this one that says sudo apt-get update-y. Paste that into the terminal, press return, and what this does is it's going to download the updates from the internet. Now we'll see a bunch of text scroll by. Sometimes it might look like it's stalled, but be patient. Now I'm speeding up the video here so that you don't have to wait for my install. Mine took about a minute to run, but your mileage may vary. And then once you're back at the prompt again, we can return to the instruction page. We can highlight this last command, sudo apt-get upgrade-y. Paste that at the prompt, press return. This installs the updates that you just downloaded, but it'll take longer to run. Mine took about eight minutes. Sometimes it takes as many as 12 minutes. Again, be patient. Sometimes it looks like it's stalling, but just grab a beverage. It'll eventually finish up and you'll be returned to the prompt. And at this point, we've installed the Raspberry Pi OS. We've renamed the host. We've reset the password and we've upgraded all of our software. Now there's one more important command I want to cover before finishing this video. That's sudo halt. Now you should type this in whenever you're done using your Pi. Most folks who shut off power to their Pi or unplug it won't run into any problems, but it is possible that if your Pi were writing to the SD card, at the time you power down, you could potentially corrupt data, so sudo halt performs a proper shutdown. Now also remember, after you've done a sudo halt, you'll want to restart your Pi, so you have to turn it off and turn it on again. But congratulations, you're ready to begin Pi projects. Now if you found this useful, there are lots more project tutorials on my YouTube channel. Liking, subscribing, commenting, and telling others about these videos helps surface the content in YouTube search, so that really helps me out. And be sure to share what you build. I look forward to celebrating your work. Now make something awesome.